I was very sick. I was home a lot. I could not drive. And I was very weak. Uh, many days, uh, I stayed in my pajamas all day. My life changed dramatically as I got sicker and sicker. I was uh, sick for the first 15 years of my life, just about, or they kept telling me. And being a sick child in intensive care and every time you doze off and wake up and somebody else's bed's empty is very frightening. I was 19 years old, you know, I didn't want to be in there. And I was really scared and confused and mad and I didn't know what was coming. I had a doctor come in, he was a real fine man and a good physician. He said, uh, the disease you have is very serious. It could very well kill you. When I was diagnosed, I, I w had no symptoms. I had changed insurance and had a, a full lab work done. And the disease was picked up from lab work. I had no idea anything was wrong with me. What was happening was because my liver was stopped up now, wasn't letting blood pass through. The blood was building up and things were getting ready to burst in my throat, which was the esophageal varices. And so they were going down and tying these off. And I think they had gone down and tied off, at, you know, and it was like one a week, it felt like, that I was having these procedures. And looking back now, I know that they were saving my life. I started coughing, couldn't stop coughing, just kept getting weaker. Went to the doctor and he told me there was nothing wrong with me, a family doctor. They put me on a helicopter, life support brought me to UK and they determined that I had good pastures and uh, coded there seven times totally. It was a very, very bad long experience. I stayed at UK so long that I just named it UK Hotel. They did a biopsy at Johns Hopkins. They couldn't prove that I had the sarcoidosis because all the biopsy showed all scar tissue. I went up there every month to Johns Hopkins for about four months and by October of 2011, they told me, they said, there's nothing more we can do for you. Uh, you need a heart transplant. I was 16 when I began getting sick with lupus. And at 22, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And then at the age of 25, I was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension. By the time I was uh, like 27, I was short of air and I was passing out. And then I started to really do research on the disease and I realized how bad it was. You know, even at my worst thought, I never figured I would ever need a transplant because I just was thinking this is not going to be me. I'm not going to need a transplant. Who, who has a transplant in life? I don't think I ever had met anyone before that point in my life that ever had a transplant.